and they returned, verse 56, and prepared spices and ointments. And what did they do? They rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Jason, is that the is that the New Testament? Yeah, this is this is after the death of Jesus. I had a preacher here last night. He asked me a question. He said, do you think only those that's in First Church are sincere here in Jamaica? I said, no. All these people that was here every night wasn't from First Church. That's right. No. That's right. no. Jamaica is full of hundreds of thousands of sincere people who's doing the best they can and would do better if somebody told them. He said, I believe everything you preach, Pastor Jennings. I said, who's your pastor? He said, oh, I am. I said, good, I'm glad you're here. He said, I believe everything you preach, but I'm hung up on the Sabbath day. He said, I keep the Sabbath. I said, which one? He said, huh? I said, which one? He said, I thought it was one. I said, you thought wrong. There's an Old Testament Sabbath. And there's a New Testament Sabbath. There's one Sabbath that got you into Canaan. And there's another Sabbath that gets you into New Jerusalem. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And this is what they never heard of. Whoa. Indeed. I wonder why I never heard of that. Like, I'm not familiar with any verses in the Bible that says that. But uh, what's your thoughts? I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if he was referencing anything, but um, yeah, I do have some thoughts, Jay. Um, yeah, I mean, where do I start? Um, so I think the question that we want to ask is, is there more than one Sabbath? Am I correct? Yeah. Right. <laughs> or is there a, yeah. Or is there a new, our old Testament Sabbath that's different from the new Testament Sabbath? All right. <laughs> I like that. I like, Rick. I actually like that. <laughs> I suppose there are two Sabbaths, the true one and the false one. Touche, Rick. But. You know, just to kind of get into the study, I mean, let's start with the Old Testament. One of the first times you see Sabbath, not necessarily stated explicitly, but definitely kind of referenced implicitly, would be Genesis chapter 2, right? Genesis chapter 2, verses 1. Jay, thank you for pulling it up. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and the, all the hosts with them. So this is after the sixth day creation. We are now going to seventh. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Now look at verse three. Now this is the key part. And God did what? He, he blessed the seventh day. Did that? Now, let me ask you a question. In chapter one, did, did that kind of, <clears throat> did you see that kind of reference made in any of the other days where the Lord said specifically that he blessed? Nope. Nope. That's the only one I see. And then on top of that, look at that. It says, and did what? Verse 3, he sanctified he it. Sanctified it. Now, what does he mean to sanctify, brother? Uh, set it aside for holy use. Exactly. It means to be made holy, right? So because that in it, he had arrested from all his work, which God created and made. So now if you now travel down... The scriptures and you go obviously the next one we can go to is um exodus chapter 20. we can see that one and we're of course going to verse eight right now this is a repetition now notice something the fact that it starts off with the word remember we can see that this is something that was already established from before right because had this been something that he was actually introducing for the first time he would have said the seventh day Sabbath, and this is something that's supposed to keep it holy. But the fact that he started off with the word remember, this helps you to understand that this is something that had been long in existence 
even before these commandments were given. So remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. This is the kicker. This is verse 11. This is where, where it really, you know, really helps us to understand the difference. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. And what do you do? Rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. And what do you do? And and hallowed it. Hallowed it. In other words, he made it sacred or holy. So, guys, that is the Old Testament, right? And we can see that obviously, even up to the time of Jesus, even past the time of Jesus, we see that, you know, especially from Genesis to Malachi, we see that this Sabbath was one that was repeated time and time again. And this was in um, effect up to the time of the Old Testament, which is Malachi. But let's see if the if the New Testament actually gives light to that as well. So one of the first things that I like to bring out was is Luke chapter four. Actually, no, let's yeah yeah let, we'll do we'll do Luke four. We'll change it up a little bit. Luke four sixteen, a well known verse, right? So mind you, we established that there's an Old Testament Sabbath from Genesis two to Exodus twenty. Now let's see what Jesus did. So this is the New Testament. Right, and so he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, verse sixteen, and as his what? His custom. Wait, hold on. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the on the Sabbath day. Hmm. And stood up for to read. All right. I don't think I need to read the rest because you know I think this is the main key. One of the customs that he had. Was that he went in on the Sabbath to the synagogue to read or to listen to the Torah being read, right? So Christ, we could even see, you know, in, inherently in this verse that Christ definitely kept the Sabbath. Now, how do we know that? Do you remember Leviticus chapter twenty-three? Yeah, I do. What, what verse am I going to, Jay? I would think that you were going to verse three. Oh yes, and you're running on the money. So it says, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day, the Sabbath rest, a what? A holy convocation. What does that mean, Jay? Let me look it up. <clears throat> so a holy convocation, H4744. Um, let's see. Uh, a strong concordance says something called out. That is mm. a public meeting. The, act, mm -hmm. the persons or the, pal the pals. Mm -hmm. uh, also a rehearsal, an assembly, a calling, a convocation, a reading. So these people were supposed to have a public meeting yeah. every single Sabbath. Convocation, yeah. convoking, reading, a calling together, a sacred assembly. Mercy. This is what yeah. God was asking for every single Sabbath. This is but you know, but you know, Brown but you know, Concordance. but you know what, Jason, somebody may say, oh, Randy, you know, that's that's the Old Testament. Where do you see that in the new? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10? Yep. Uh, all right. I believe it's verse 25. Yep. Oh, yeah. This is what it says. It says, not what? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So... Didn't we understand that the word convocation means a sacred assembly? Yeah. And so what are we admonished in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25? Do not forsake the... Uh, to keep that going. Yep. To keep that going. So when so when he went in on the Sabbath to preach, he kept, not only, he kept not only the Old Testament as far as the Holy Convocation, as far as the Sabbath was concerned, but he's also, you know, even keeping this New Testament understanding of what Sabbath is supposed to represent as well, as far as the, the sacred assembly as well. All right. Now we can go to another verse, Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Again, these are all, you know, Sabbath goodies, as I call it. Right. Look at Mark, Mark 2, verse 27. Let's, uh, go, there. let's go there. Mark, Mark 2, 2 27. Uh-huh. And it says, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man, not what? Not man for the Sabbath. Therefore... The Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Okay. 
Now, so we can see here again from Genesis, we see that, we see it in Exodus. We now all the way go down to, to Jesus' time to the fact where, as was his custom on the Sabbath day, he did not forsake the assembly, which was a holy convocation. He came in on the Sabbath and actually either listened or probably, you know, in that case in Luke 14, 4 verse 16, he stood up to read. And we see here that clearly this Sabbath that, that you know, Jesus make a reference to in Mark chapter 2 verse 28, it was obviously the Old Testament Sabbath because that's all he had at the time, right? <laughs> there was no New Testament being written. So the only writings that they had was the Old Testament. So that had to have been the connection to the Old Testament. So, so far, it's been um, continuous. But now let's go to one of my favorites. And Jay, I think you know my favorite on this one. Luke chapter 23, verse what? 50. <laughs> oh, yes. So now, look at this. This is after Jesus died. And this is what his followers, the women, maybe possibly his disciples did as well. In fact, can you go to, let's start with verse 54 since it's on the screen already. Luke 20, verse 54, it says, And the day was a preparation. So we know that to be the day before Sabbath. And the Sabbath drew on. And the manna also, which came with him from Galilee, <clears throat> followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned, verse 56, and prepared spices and ointments. And what did they do? They rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Jason, is that the, is that the New Testament? Yeah, this is this is after the death of Jesus. Now it's funny. I already know we're gonna hear it. Hey, well, um, it's different, you know, because now you know we we've now entered under the new covenant, and you know they they kind of go into that whole direction when they feel like they can't get their um their story straight for this, right? But I want to just point something out as in regards to the new the new covenant, the new testament that people make reference to. Go to Hebrews chapter nine. Hebrews chapter 9. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9. And we're looking at verse 15 and 16. 15 and 16. Okay. And look what it says in regards to the New Testament or the New Covenant, as we made reference to before. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant or testament, that which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance now this is the key part right here verse 16 for where a testament is or covenant there must also of necessity be what the death of a testator so a lot of times people like to go through this because you know well when jesus died um that old system was done away with we don't have to follow it anymore but now it spoke of a new covenant so he's saying that when the testament when the testator died the new covenant or the new testament then became into effect but jason do we know what the new covenant is uh of course but can you also read verse 17 oh sure it says for oh i like this for a testament is a force after what after men, men are, are dead. dead otherwise it is no strength at all while the testament is living so he's saying that the new covenant could not have been enforced until christ have died and if that's when it could be enforced or really carried out. But again, understanding that this New Testament come into place, we need to understand what this New Testament or New Covenant is. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah. Ah, let's go there. This is a big point too. Oh, yes. You know, I, I know where you're going with this, but this is about the New Covenant. And I, I wonder if our brothers and sisters who are against keeping the Sabbath holy... Mm -hmm. Would they consider themselves New Covenant, you know, Christians? Because they like to say that Seventh-day Adventists, we're under the Old Covenant, we're keeping the Old Covenant laws. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Do they consider themselves under the New Covenant? Go ahead. Most of them will say that. I mean, most of them will say that, but let's see what the New Covenant is. It says verse 31, Jeremiah 31, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Now, this is verse 33. This is the this is the this is the, the covenant right here. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. 
after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in where? In their inward parts. And write it in their heart. And I will be their God. And what? They and shall be. My people. Ah, so remember, the new covenant didn't change the law or do away with it. The administration changed from tablets of stone to the heart. Which means what was on or written on the tablets of stone is still in effect. Nothing changed. It's just now being presented in a different way. Jay, did you, did you have something to say before I continue? No. Like say something. Go ahead, preacher. Go ahead. Preacher. All right. So let me just let me just finish this point up. All right. I just want to give you a side point. Go to March chapter 16. People may not think this is big, but I think this is of some significance. Probably not a much, but something to consider. March chapter 16, it says, well, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and the mother and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. The reason why I bought this one, Mark chapter 16, verse 1, is I was thinking, you know, when I was, you know, I guess thinking about what I, how I wanted to respond. And I was thinking by the time that Mark wrote this, this is years after Christ had already went back up to heaven. Right? And it's yeah. funny that when he makes reference to it, Right? You know what I'm saying? Now, he should have wrote, and when the former Sabbath was passed, or when Sabbath at that time was, right? But he speaks when the about. When Sabbath was passed. Right? Every time a lot like, of these. There's nothing, passes, there's nothing in the Bible that ever says old Sabbath. You, right? It never talked about it in the past tense as if this is something that was done away. It's like he spoke about it in the present tense, and when the Sabbath was passed, the weekly Sabbath. So I think that's just a, another point to consider. But let's go to Mark onto Matthew chapter 24. I want to land this plan so that we can, you know, finish this question. Matthew chapter 24. Um, Jay, let's go to start in verse 3. Start in verse 3. And look what it says. And again, you see kind of the, the subheading. We see where we were going. As he sat up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of what? The world. Mm hmm. Now look at verse 19 to 20. So we can see that just because of the fact it's at the beginning of the chapter, we can see that what is going to be discussed is really talking about the last days. And of course, when Jesus comes back as well. Look what it said in, in verse 19 in regards to the plight of his people. So verse 19 and 20, it says, Woe to them that are with child and to them that give what? Suck in the. Those days. Yeah. It says, that but. Like last days. Yeah, but pray that your flight be not in the what? In the winter. Neither on the? On the Sabbath day? Now look at verse 21. For then shall be what? Great tribulation. Such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. Now, you know, Christianity speaks about a great tribulation at the time of the end. Right, in many different various kind of forms. But the point that I really want to harp on is that when making reference to this great tribulation, we always know it to be at the last day before Christ comes back. But look what he says happens right before it as far as the plight in regards to his people. Pray that your flight, verse 20, be not on the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So again, he's making reference to the Sabbath, understanding that this Sabbath day is still to be known and obviously by inference kept in these last days even right before or when tribulation actually happens is that is that clear i hope that's clear to someone in the chat that's pretty clear jesus is talking about the last days what the world would be like in the last days yep. and he's saying pray that your flight is not on the sabbath day come on in the last days come on but yet the sabbath is done away with why would we be giving honor to the Sabbath day to a point that we shouldn't pray that our flight is on that if there is no Sabbath? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make no sense to me, brother. But I let me give you one more verse. All right. Um, go to Revelation chapter 21. And I just want to read the first verse, right? Oh, you're quick, Jay. And I saw a new heaven and a what? 
and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now go down to verse four. Go, go to three. I'm gonna go, I can go to, I'm gonna go to three and four. It says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his God, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Look at verse one, look at verse four. And God shall wipe away what? All, All tears, tears from the eyes, and they shall be what? No more there death. Shall be no more death. Uh huh. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the form things have passed away. Jason, when do you see the fact that there's that the, that God is going to tabernacle with His people? When you see the fact that there's going to be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, no more pain, and the form things have passed away? What is this talking about? What 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 time frame is this now or the the time of the end, the last days? It's it's when he makes a new heaven and a new earth, like when which is pa even past the last days, right? That's something that's to be yeah. future, even past the last days of this earth. Now go to Isaiah, absolutely. Now go to Isaiah sixty-six. Look at verse twenty-two and twenty-three. Now, what did I read about Revelation twenty-one one? That there's, that there's going a to new heaven and a new earth. And when did we say that was coming? That's even the second coming. Right? Way in the future. Yeah. Way in the future. Now look what it says. It says, and it came to pass that from you know the first twenty. I, I almost skipped verse twenty two, my fault. For as the what? The new heavens and the new and earth. the new earth. Oh shoot. So this gives you a time frame, a time slot of when this is to take place, which I will make shall remain before you, before me, saith the Lord. So shall your seed in your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from what? One new moon to another. New moon to another, and come on from one Sabbath to another. Uh huh. Shall all, all flesh you go. come to worship before me? Yeah, saith the Lord. Wait, so, so that means in heaven, when he makes a new heaven and a new earth, all flesh is going to come to worship before him from yeah. one Sabbath to another. Yep, and we, we already established in Revelation 21, and even now from this, we can see that this is to be in the time of the end. So again, that's New Testament. So again, let me let me let me let me wrap this up. We can see that from Genesis 2, Exodus 20 that the Sabbath principles were set and it extended all the way down to Jesus time where he established himself as a lord of the Sabbath as far as Mark 2. He kept the Sabbath in Luke 4 verse 16. The disciples kept it in Luke 23, verse 46. And even after the new covenant had begun because the death of the testator had, you know, had died, which was Christ, the covenant that was on the scene now, the new covenant, was the fact that it was transferred from the administration of the 10 tablets, sorry, the, the 10 commandments on the tablets of stone, now to the heart. And we can see in Matthew 24 and Isaiah 66 that even in the last days and even past the time of the tribulation of the last days and even the second coming, that the Sabbath will still be in effect because this is what's making reference to in those time frames. But a few questions that don't even have to be answered before I, before I give this over to you, Jay. One, uh, one, one thought that has given you homework. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying... Mentioned the ark in heaven. John got a glimpse of it. So oh, let's well. just go there. Let's just sure. go there. So what yeah. he's referring to is Revelation chapter 11, 11 verse, verse 19, 18, 19, 19. But I'll yeah. read verse 18, right? Yeah. It says, and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that yeah. they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great. And should just destroy them which destroy the earth. Yeah. But look what he sees in the place yeah. where God is judging. It says this. And the temple of God was open in heaven. And yeah. there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. Hold up. So in heaven, in the very presence of God, where he is judging, the thing that he sees or that John sees in there. Is the Ark of the Testament. Yep. And what was inside of the Ark of the Testament? The Bible tells us. Deuteronomy yep. chapter 10, it says, At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come yeah. up unto me in the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. And yeah. I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. 
Yep. And I made an ark of shittim wood and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first and went up into the mount having the two tables in my hand. And he, talking about God, wrote yep. on the tables according to the first writing. What did he write on those tables? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. Come on, preacher. The Lord spake unto you in the mount of the Come mist on. of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. So yeah, when Jesus is judging, in the very room that he's judging, that same Ark of his Testament is there. And it's not yeah. a discount. There is not a commandment moving, move, uh, removed from that. <laughs> yeah. It's still yeah. 10. Right? Of course. And that of course. one in the very middle that says, remember the Sabbath day, Come on. is still there. I, as Come a matter on. of fact, as a confirmation, we could go to James chapter 2. It says this, okay. uh, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Come on. For he that said, do not commit adultery, that's yeah. commandment number seven, said, do mm. not kill. That's also mm. one of the Ten Commandments. Mm. Now, if yeah. thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Now, yeah. here's the key. So speak ye, and so do, as they yeah. that shall be judged by the law. Wait a second. I'm supposed to speak and do as if I'm going to be judged by the law? Yeah. Well, if I'm going to be behaving as if I'm being judged by the law, that means I should not have other gods before me. That means I should not take God's name in vain. That means I should not bow down to idols. Mm -hmm. yeah, I should yeah. not still kill, you know, commit adultery, covet, all those yeah. things. I should honor my father and mother. But should I also keep that one that is in the very middle? which says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Because Absolutely. are we going to keep the whole law but offend in one point? Come on. Another thing that we should consider too, you know, a lot of people like to say that, you know, the Sabbath is done away with, right? But are we going to charge that to Jesus? Did Jesus remove the Sabbath day? Mm -hmm. The Bible says only one person thinks to remove the Sabbath. 25, change it. 25, come on. Yeah, it says yeah. this about the Antichrist. It says this, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, yeah. and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and he shall think to change times and laws. Yeah. Uh, what commandment deals with time in the law? Four. Four. Come on. So are we going to charge to Jesus? That which rightfully belongs to the Antichrist? Come on. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus come really on. come to change come on, Brister, come the on. fourth commandment? Look, come on. Ken Horse <laughs> is in the house, and he is going right where I am going. This is what he said. Matthew chapter 5, Five verse, verse 17. 17. Come on, preacher. Make a plan. <clears throat> it says this. Think not that I am come to destroy the Lord or come the on. prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. Let's read a little bit mercy. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Keep going. Can you verse 19 for me, please? Oh, I, I, I will. But I'm just going to oh, milk this okay, real okay, quick. Okay, oh, because sure nothing uh -huh. is going to pass until yeah. all be fulfilled. Jesus says yeah. not one jot or tittle. How about yeah. the whole commandment? Come on. People want to remove a whole commandment. Jesus is saying not one jot or tittle. But he, yeah. people are saying a whole commandment is removed. Mm -hmm. It says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least the commandments, commandments. My a.k.a. God. the Sabbath, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in least the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. Are we calling Jesus the least in the kingdom of heaven? Are we saying no. Jesus changed the Sabbath day? And <laughs> Mercy God. And, and you know, whosoever shall do and teach yeah. them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. And, you know, and, and I just want to kind of follow up just as far as asking these last questions to, you know, people consider. Don't need, I don't need the answer now, but just something for you to consider. You know, if the fact that it said remember, right, you know, that's something of importance. Why is there not a place stated in the scriptures, right? Where, in fact, where is the implication, right, that a change was made in regards to the one commandment where, it was it's explicitly said for us to remember. 
Because most of the time when I hear it, people say, oh, well, we, we do this because of this, and we do this because of that. But there was no explicit change. And my thing is, for something that that is so important as far as bringing glory to God, I would believe if it was that important, Christ should have made mention at least one time, especially during his ministry. But it's not there, which means, no friends, way. it is still binding. Can I? <clears throat> I know. We need to move on, but I want to show a couple more things, and I want to do something oh, yes. else real quick. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Even John, look at this. John, Come on. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. It yeah. says, I was in the spirit on which day? The Lord's day. Yeah. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So mm -hmm. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. When is yeah. the Lord's day? I can. <laughs> if we're just <laughs> going <laughs> straight by the Bible. Come on. When is the Lord's Day? Well, here's what the Bible says the Lord's yeah. Day is. Yeah, you may go to man, you may go to outside sources, but how about we just ask Jesus, when is the Lord's Day? This Come on, preacher. Come says. on. He says, the Sabbath was made for man and not man yeah. for the Sabbath. Yeah. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord, Lord. Also, also of the, of the Sabbath. Sabbath. Come on. So the Come day on, that Come he's called, claiming lordship over is yeah. the Sabbath. It's the Lord's Day. As a matter of fact, you want to see it a little bit more clearer? Let's go to another verse. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13. If yeah. thou turn thy foot from the Sabbath, yeah. from doing thy pleasure on my um, holy day. Oh, hold on. What's holy good? day? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right there, right there. My holy day. So what day is the Lord's day? Jesus calls it my Come day. On. The Bible says God calls it my holy day. And Come call on. the Sabbath of the light, the, Lord, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt yeah. thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. Come on. And there is another verse in the Bible that tells us, God will not alter the things that has gone from his lips. Well, Come this on. is one of the things that has gone from God's lips that God will not alter. Can I show you another one? Of course. Keep um, it going, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you another thing about the Sabbath, and then I promise we'll go on. Exodus chapter 20. This is what it says. It says in Exodus chapter 20, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. We know this, right? Mm -hmm. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord did what to the, the seventh he day? What did he, do? The, he blessed the Sabbath day. God blessed the Sabbath day. Yeah. Isn't that what it says? Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for that verse, JD. Yeah, God blessed the seventh day. Now, yeah. this is what God is saying. Numbers chapter 23, verse 20. Numbers chapter 23, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Behold, I yeah. have received commandment to bless. Yeah. And he has have blessed. blessed. Come on. Yeah. And I cannot, cannot reverse it. Yo, that is such an indictment. Whatever God blessed, nobody can reverse it. Come on. This is scripture. Whatever God has blessed, nobody could reverse it. Come on. First Chronicles 17, 27. First Chronicles 17, 27 says yeah. this. Now, therefore, let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that yeah. it may be before thee forever. For thou blessest, yeah. O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. forever. Come on. What God blesses is blessed. Yeah. Forever.